some information that Antelope Valley is an area in North Dakota where there's coal. This is a loaded question. Then you know the um, okay, Th this is the, this is the, we're trying to keep tabs on where the grid is, how grid is, I have these, the blue lines that you see here in Minnesota. Um, this is North Dakota and South Dakota, we mark the, from the Department of Energy's website, we mark the coal, the nuclear, and uh, wind generation sources, and you're trying to get an idea of a pattern of what's going on. Uh, if you look here, um, that first thing that catches your eye, and I'll just jump to the conclusion, is, is that you have the swing up here at the top and you see all of the coal production up here. Okay, I mean, that, the, 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 these are utility companies and they are making, they are selling electricity. And the uh, one thing that's interesting about being a utility company right now is, is that uh, if you look at their, their, you know, that growth curve that I was showing that was going down and down, if you're an investor in an electric company and you're getting money for them selling electricity, this is not very good news. <laughs> because this means basically that your, your profit, your commodity is being sold at a, you know, what, I don't know, 1%. Hey, that's about the same as a U.S. Treasury note. But won't the price be going up? <laughs> the price, uh, the price goes up, but your profit, your profit margins have to go up above it. You know, you're still... It's not a good time to invest. Is anyone here in electric in, in utility? No, but uh, could you hold up that little picture of the one with the fire with the power line? <laughs> so let me decide the power line. That is a right. scale that is a scale drawing and photograph the, from okay. the Arrowhead Western line of a line of the of the size that the line is the defined. Yeah. 170 foot tower that is a scale drawing with the 60 foot foot tower next to it. Uh, some of the the uh, smaller diameter, some of the larger diameter, the larger. Yeah. Really. So that barn is in the easement, right? No. Oh, <laughs> not the easement. Uh, just the <laughs> You're right. You're right. The barn should be over here. <laughs> when I asked the ATC about the right of ways. I think we're not ready for this, yes. They said the right-of-way is 150 feet wide, but the tower is 150 feet long. And I said, shouldn't it be 150 feet on both sides? Because if it tips over, it's going to be outside of the right-of-way. You don't want these tipping over. <laughs> 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 okay, but, but so anyway, the idea is that, the, you know, we've, we've got a slow growth, right? Market for electricity is not something we're going to bank on. Uh, so we have a, if, if this is a situation that has existed in the United States for a number of years, this chart, you can find a similar version of this chart long before wind generation. And this shows basically that the average cost of producing electricity and therefore the price of consuming electricity regionally in the United States. This is a year average. So it takes away all the seasonal stuff and puts it into a... Uh, Okay, so we have up here a blue area with lower cost and the red and the yellow and orange are getting greater and greater. So we have we have in Western up here in the mid in the upper Midwest, North Dakota, South Dakota, some in Minnesota. So that we can just a ballpark number, about seven cents per kilowatt hour might be the market residential rate at what we call a hub over here where it's generated. If there's a transmission line and it's big enough to carry the excess, the, the amount that's not being used in this region, to another hub, as it's called, then that can be resold to another market. And that price can go up at this ballpark figure. It's pretty reasonable, about nine cents per kilowatt hour set in Minnesota. Then if we have a big line that goes further east than there, we can get another hub increase, like say maybe over here in Wisconsin, where well, as we're closer to 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Jump over to Ohio, 12, 14, sometimes uh, it can even get up above 17 or 18 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, that in itself is not a huge deal because most of the time in the United States, we have excess capacity all over the United States. We generate all the power that we need. We have that big boom in the coal plants that was going on two years ago. In Wisconsin alone, we have developed 22, no, 3,200 megawatts of power in the last two years of generation. We have, we, I, I don't know what we're doing with all of around 50%, 40% of, of use right now. So it's not a question of, the question is, is it's cost. Well, how much is it going to be and where are you going to charge it? Here's the trick, is that when peak demand comes, when we have several days of hot weather strung back to back, and those are all the air conditioners are turned on and all the systems are stressed, we can get a bump that's called what they say peak 
off to get a huge jump in the amount of electricity that is, is used. And it could be so my back about 140 percent or so, something like that. Those of you around, I see some folks here from the uh, uh, Burning Electric Board. Um, 140 percent might be what we'd be looking at. So if you're going to have a garden hose to you now, if you're watering the state with a garden hose, you're going to have the faucet about a third, uh, you know, 30 to 40 percent open to cover your basic daily needs. But then you have to have enough capacity in there so they can turn.